All right, we're picking up uh, chapter 26. We're going to cover section 3 and do a bunch of examples at the end. Um, this section is going to cover current density and drift velocity of electrons. All right, um, so current density. It's going to be the magnitude of, uh, excuse me, the magnitude of current density, and we're going to use the letter J for current density, is equal to the current per unit area through any element of cross-section. It has the same direction as the velocity of the moving charges if they're positive, and it's going to have the opposite direction if they're negative. So let's just say, for instance, I had a wire, and we're looking at the current density through a specific cross-section of that wire. If you had um, you know, positive charge going this way, oops, your current, so the, if this is uh, the direction of the current, then your current density is going to be in that direction as well. If you're talking about negative charge, it's obviously going to be flowing in the opposite direction. But again, the current density is going opposite of that negative charge, right? So the current density is going to be following the electric field um, inside of a wire. All right, so the equation that um, we're going to use uh, is that the current is just going to be the integral of the current density times some bit of area. Um, if the current is uniform across the surface and parallel to dA, then J is also going to be uniform and parallel to, to, to dA. So this is, um, dA would be our sort of uh, area element going away from the cross section. Um, and if everything is, is, is perpendicular or parallel, then um, this equation is just going to uh, simplify. So you have the current is equal to, again, the integral of just j times dA, because if they're uh, going in the same direction, right, it's going to be uh, just the cosine of 0, which is 1, right? So we don't have to worry about the dot product. Um, you can pull out the j if, if your current density is going to be uniform across this or over this cross section. So throughout this entire cross section here, if your current density is uniform, you can pull out the j. Therefore, your, your integral of dA is just going to be whatever the area is. All right, so simply, we can say that the current density is equal to the current divided by the area of the cross section. Uh, and A is just going to be the total area of the surface of the cross section. All right, the uh, SI unit for current density is ampere per square meter. So there's nothing, um, nothing we haven't seen here. It's just going to be the units divided by each other. All right. Um, so this figure is going to show uh, how current density can be represented with a similar uh, set of lines, which we can be, which we can call streamlines. Um, you might have seen this before in other applications with with water flow and things like that. Now the current which is toward the right, uh, makes a transition from the wider conductor at the left and uh, to the narrow conductor at the right. Since the charge is going to be conserved during the transition, right? Charge must be conserved. The same amount of charge in is equal to the, same, is equal to the charge out. So the amount of charge and thus the amount of current cannot change. However, the current density changes uh, and it's greater in the narrower, uh, the narrower conductor. Right, so if you, um, you can see that the lines are pretty far apart here, but as you decrease the area, the same amount of charge needs to flow through it, so the lines become much smaller. So your current density is going to be greater, because right, the, the lines are closer, so your density of charge is going to be greater. Okay. All right, so current density and drift speed. Um, when a conductor has a current passing through it, the electrons are going to move randomly, like I've mentioned in, in the previous lecture. But they do tend to drift with some drift speed, and we're going to call that drift speed um, VD, so velocity drift, right, the drift speed, in the direction opposite that of the applied electric field that causes the current, right? So the electrons, which are negative, are going to be going opposite of the electric field and opposite the current, right? Because we said that um, positive um, or the, the current follows the positive charge. So the drift speed is going to be very tiny compared with the speeds uh, in the random motion, right? When we said the speeds in random motion are, are moving very quickly um, to the order of about 10 to the 6th meters a second. And um, we'll see in, in a later example that the drift speed, the actual net change uh, in charge, is actually going to be quite small. 
So in the figure, the equivalent drift of positive charge carriers is in the direction of the applied electric field. Now if we assume that these charge carriers all move with the same drift speed, and that the current density J is uniform across the wire's cross-sectional area, then the number of charge carriers in some length is just going to be uh, NAL where n is going to be the number of carriers per unit volume. So we've used this little n before. In this case, it's going to be the number of carriers in some unit of volume, right? So the number of electrons or the number of protons or, or, or molecules or whatever. A is going to be a cross-sectional area, and L is going to be some length. So as you can see, it's just we're just calling this some length of wire, where our cross-sectional area is like that. All right. Um, so the total charge um, of the carriers in the length L, each with some charge E, is then going to be just Q is equal to NAL times E, right? So if this is if this, this value is the number of charge carriers in some length, just multiply that by the charge, and that's going to give you the total charge. Oops. Um, so the total charge moves through uh, any cross-section of wire in some time interval. Uh, and we can find that, or we can say this time interval is just going to be whatever the length is divided by whatever this drift velocity is. Right? We get this equation simply from velocity is equal to distance over time. Right? And I just solved this for time. Right? Where our velocity is going to be the drift velocity, and the distance is L, which is the length of the wire. Okay, um, so that's going to give you the time interval. Now we want to see what the uh, the current um, and and eventually what the current density is going to look like. All right, so if we start with um, the current is equal to the amount of charge per time. All right, that's our definition of current, and we plug in what we just found out. So we plug in for charge. This is going to be n times our cross-sectional area times L times the charge divided by what we just found for T over here, which is our length divided by our drift velocity. Right. Simplifying this, we get this is just going to be N times our area times our charge times the drift velocity because the L's are just going to cancel out. And that means if we solve for our drift velocity, this is just going to be our current divided by NAE. And I divided by A, we know is our um, charge or our current density rather. So I can plug that in. So our current density divided by um, the number of carriers per unit volume times the charge or uh, the, the charge of the, of the electron or the proton. All right, so rearranging this and solving for our charge, or our current density, rather, this is just going to be J times NE times our drift velocity. And these are vectors, right, because the velocity is a vector, which means our current density is going to be uh, a vector as well. All right, so here is our equation for current density, given the drift velocity. All right, so let's do uh, some examples of this. Hopefully we can uh, make some sense of it all. So we're going to look at current density in a uniform situation, and then we're going to look at current density in a, a non-uniform situation. All right, so first let's do uniform. Uh, the current density in a cylindrical wire of radius uh, r is equal to 2 millimeters is uniform across a, uh, across a cross-section of the wire, and our current density is 2.0 times 10 to the fifth, amps per meter squared. So what they're showing you here is the cross-section of a length of wire, right? So if we have a, a, a cylindrical wire, this is just showing you what the cross-section will look like. So what is the current density through the outer portion of the wire between the radial distance of R over 2 and R? So here is what we're trying to find our current density, um, or what the current is, rather. We don't care about what's on the inside. All right. So first, we need to, um, we, we want only the current through this reduced area, this reduced cross-section, and we'll call that A prime. Right? This is just going to be the area 
um, between, you know, this, basically this area here, the area between uh, the outer cylinder and the inner um, limit. Uh, so to do that, we can just say um, that our area prime is going to be our total area. So this is just that would be the total cross-sectional area, which is pi big R squared, right, of the whole thing. And then we subtract out this middle part. So we take this area and we subtract out the middle part here. All right, let me erase this so we can see it again. All right, so the middle part is just going to be pi r divided by 2 squared. Simplifying that, this is just pi times 3r squared divided by 4. And solving for our cross-sectional area, uh, oops, this is going to be 3 pi over 4 times our radius squared, so it's 0 0.0020 meters squared. And we get 9.424 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared, because right, it's an area. All right, pretty small. All right, so again, this is just the area between these two um, radiuses. All right. Uh, well, now we want to find the current. So we use our equation for current, which is just going to be our current density times our area. Right, I just took the equation we found earlier, rearranged it, and solved for current. And we can go ahead and plug in. So our current density is going to be uh, 2.0 times 10 to the fifth amps per square meter, which is given to us in the problem. And then multiply that by the area that we just solved for. So that's 9.42, uh, excuse me, 9.424 times 10 to the negative 6, and that's going to be a meter squared. Okay. Now, solving this out, we just see that the current is 1.9 amps. All right, so suppose instead that um, the current density through this cross-section varies with some radial distance, r, uh, and we're going to say j is equal to a r squared. All right, so now our current density is not the same throughout the cross-section. It's going to vary with this radius. a is given as a constant, uh, 3.0 times 10 to the 11th, amps divided by meters to the 4th, and it's meters to the 4th because you're multiplying by r squared. All right, so you're going to end up with this value being uh, amps over meter squared. All right, so what is the current now through the same outer portion of the cross section? So we're still talking about this area out here, right? And um, we're trying to find what the current is. All right, so the current density, J, um, along the wire's length and the differential area, DA, are going to be perpendicular um, to a cross section of the wire. So um, they're going to be in the same direction. So we can get rid of this dot product, right? We have the dot product of j dot dA given to us in the integral, and um, the cosine between the angles is just going to be, or the cosine of the angle, which is 0, is just going to be 1. All right, so this is just simplifies to j dot dA. We can say that, um, again, the current density is going to be either into or out of the page, and the um, cross-sectional area is also into or out of the page going in the same direction. All right. Now, we need to replace the differential area, dA, with something that we can actually integrate between the limits of r over 2 to r. So the simplest replacement of this area um, is going to be, uh, excuse me, because j is given as a function of r, is the area 2 pi r dr, which is a thin ring of circumference 2 pi r. So if we did a thin ring like this, we took the circumference, and then we multiply that by dr, which is just going to be the differential... Um, or, or the differential length element dA, which is, you know, the width of this ring, we can then integrate that out all the way to the edge. All right, so what does this look like? All right, so we start with, again, our current equation is going to be the integral of j dot dA, and that's going to be equal to just j dA because of the simplification I showed you over here. 
plugging in what we have. So this is going to be the integral of from r over 2 to r, right? Because we're going from this inner ring all the way to the edge, which is, which is r. And we're going to put in for j a r squared, which is what they give us for j. And then we multiply this by whatever our differential area element is. And we said that's going to be the circumference, 2 pi r, times dr, which is the width element. All right, simplifying that and pulling out what we don't need inside the integral, you get 2 pi a, because a again, a is a constant, r over 2 to r. And then you end up with r cubed inside dr. Right, so this is just ends up being a pretty simple integral. You're just taking the integral of r cubed. All right, so this just ends up being uh, 2 pi a times what we found in the integral. So that's just going to be r fourth, r to the fourth divided by 4. And again, that's from r over 2 to r. Go ahead and uh, going forward and plugging in our values for r get pi a over 2 times r to the fourth, because we pulled the 1 fourth out, and we get r to the fourth over 16, right, because this is going to be the first minus the second, or the top minus the bottom. All right. So this is then simplifying to 15 over 32 pi a r to the fourth. Plugging everything in, you have 15 over 32 pi times 3.0 times 10 to the 11th amps per meters to the fourth, which is our a value constant that they gave us times our radius, which is 0 0.0020 meters. That's to the fourth. So this gets us 7.1 amps. All right. A lot more ampage. Um, and that's because this, the, uh, the current density was changing as, as we went throughout the wire.